Okay. So today we're going to be learning how to make breakfast sausages. Now this is some stupidly easy stuff right here. This is, as long as you take a few little precautions, it's, it's stupidly simple. Just do your basics very well. Uh, right now we've got, I think, 17 pound of grind, which is just lean deer meat. And you could make just straight lean sausage. All you got to do is add the correct mixture of the correct seasoning to it. Uh, but this customer in particular is wanting some pork fat added, so you want to try to add uh, roughly 20%. So 17 pounds, we put in like three and a half pounds, right? Whatever this actual poundage is, if you got a scale, figure it out to the house. That's how much fat you want to add, roughly 20%. So, which gives a total of like 21, 20 whatever pounds. Now, as far as seasoning goes, we use Legs Blend 10. It says right there, Blend 10. It's a pre-mix, this ain't a recipe video, this is this is the easy way to do it, just buy it pre-mix. I also got a mix seven, I think. So anyways, now as far as having to weigh out the correct amount, you know that 20 pounds is roughly four fifths of 25 pounds. So you can actually feel that seasoning in there, the top of it's right there. So you know we're half that, you know we're about three quarters that, just pinch down the under. And when you pinch and you pour out, this stays behind and the rest goes out. This this is the stupid, simple way of doing it without a measuring device at all. Touchy top. Now, I made that look simple without cutting all the way through, but just touch your tip and just drag. It's just a touch. Don't push. Don't put any pressure. Just touch it and pull. And that'll open her up like that. So now you can see the seasoning in there. I'm just going to pinch it. There that is, come down to the correct spot you need to pinch it at. Pinch it. Sprinkle it all over it. And you'll notice at the bottom, the remainder stayed behind. Stuff you don't need, so that's, that's a simple way of mixing up. Now I'm just gonna chop this fat up and throw it in there. Cause this can gum up your grinder in a heartbeat if uh depending on what size grinder you got so you want to get it kind of small get all my stuff mixed up before I run it through the grinder. Now a lot of people will skimp out on that and they'll put the fat up in the grinder or up in the pan and then they'll uh, put their meat up in there, sprinkle the season on top, run it through and then they don't even mix it at all. They don't pre-mix it, they don't mix it then, they just allow the worm to mix it which ain't really the best thing to do because you're going to have pieces that are way too salty and then you're going to have pieces that ain't seasoned enough. So this is just how you get to keep everything even. This first mix ain't got to be the greatest in the world. It's just going to put you in the right vicinity. Really the main reason of mixing it this time is just go ahead and make sure all the fat don't come out one clump because if it is, if you get just one solid patch of fat, it will clog your grinder up. So you want to try to avoid that. That's good enough for now. That's not a good mixing, but that's good enough for now. Now it's grinder time. starting to come out. This is from the previous customer, which is, that's, that's just the way it is in the meat market. <laughs> so, Alright. 
and bring this back. Now, now it's just time to hand mix it. Some people will take and like put sprinkle cooking oil over the top, which helps your hands glide better. Uh, that literally don't hurt a thing. You can't even taste or see any kind of difference. And it does help it glide better, but for right now, we're just going to mix it up as is. And you can see just some of the differences right now. If you try to run it through the grinder again, there's going to be solid chunks of fat and then some pretty lean pieces. So that's, once again, this is why you mix it. Now, secret to mixing, you, when you reach in there, you're trying to make your fingers hit the bottom of the container. You come on to the bottom, and you come back up to the top, and then when you go through, you're squeezing as you go through all the way to the bottom till you feel the bottom. So you start on the bottom, and you finish on the bottom. Now hopefully you can see just how much different of a creature this is already from what it was just a few seconds ago. Now, the real big question. How do you know it's right? How do you know it's seasoned properly? How do you know it's going to suit your own personal taste? Well, the most accurate way is just take you off a small little piece and uh, go fry it up and cook it. Obviously, if uh, we can't do that because we got to cut deer after deer after deer, we can't do that. So, what's, a, what's another option? Some people do the smell test. They'll sit there and see if it smells right. That's not always accurate. Uh, then everybody on YouTube seen that field test where you pick up some and it's supposed to stick to your hands for five seconds, all that stuff. Once again, some deer are more sticky than others. All meat is going to be different. Some deer is going to want to fall apart. Some deer is going to be naturally sticky, so that stickiness don't work neither. So what's one other method you can use that is the second best way of knowing how good it's going to be? And it's as simple as this. You pull you off a piece. And you want to get in a pretty consistent ball. And then when you got it in a nice uniform shape, okay, that's pretty good. Now don't eat it because that's nasty. But anyways, you can get a good idea of what it's gonna taste like. And that tastes like pork sausage. It's, it's got the pork fat, it's got the season in it. So now the only thing you do is run through that grinder again. So here we go. And also, if you're going to be handling bags, now's a good time to wash your hands off or change gloves, so be back in a second. And just like earlier, when we run this just straight burger out of the head, you've got some stuff left in the head that was just this halfway mixed sausage. So you got to run it out of the head, mix it back in there, and then you start bagging it. You can see it's all sporadic and ain't consistent. color change right there. That's what you're looking for. So now, you know from here on out everything's been ground at least twice. Hopefully you can see the big color difference there between or one versus the other. Now, this is the only part that I cheat a little bit. This stuff that ain't been quite mixed twice, I just take it and mix it sporadically through the top here. Cause it's one thing if all of it's halfway mixed, but if you got just a few little specks here and there, by the time it mixes with the other stuff and that worm in the head, you're gonna be just fine. So now it's time to bag it or whatever, and it's faster if you can go ahead and bag it as it comes out. So if you're at the, doing this at the house, you got a little tabletop grinder or something, take a Ziploc bag, and just shove it over the horn, and just run it out in the horn, just Ziploc it in the bag. You're done that way. Uh, if you want to, if you're doing the whole paper thing, catch it on some paper, blow it off to the side, then all you gotta do is run over there and wrap the paper up. So the the less steps, the better. You just the better method you get, the more willing you're gonna be to do it, and the more of it you'll ultimately do. So try to cut down on your steps. 
here we put them in these little one pound sausage bags and uh well they, they're advertised as one pound but really like a pound and a half so we're going to take that slide that sleeve over it here we go There's a pound. I grab and kind of squeeze down, give her a twist, and that's what we're trying to make. I throw it on the table. I already got another bags ready to go in the exact position that I prefer them. Everybody's got their own taste. Throw it over there, grab another one, come right back. Okay, master tip. If you overfill it, which we know the one pound mark is right here, but if you overfill it, just pinch it off right there. There you go. <laughs> and if you run out of bags, grab them over. Alright. This one's left over in the head, and we're going to use this to finish running that sausage out that's stuck in the head now. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So, start off with 20 pounds. Now we got 20 bags. So, we knew we put roughly a pound in each one. So, that means we've done our job good. And when you're putting them in tubes, the last step is to click them together. Now, I don't know what this is actually called. I just, I just know how to use one. It, it says staples on the side, it, either way. It's a stapler. It's a stapler, okay? <laughs> I mean... I don't know the technical name. It's a stapler. The old, the old word for it's a clicker, because you click all that together. So you grab your clicker. There's a couple of ways to use this thing. Now, I like them with the hook on them. Everybody's got their own taste. I like them with the hook on them, because you twist up the excess sleeve, run it in there, kind of push down, and it puts staple on top. That is a fairly fast way of doing it because you can grab another one and go. Also, lay them down to where they're going to be facing in the fashion of where you're going to click them at. So you see how long that, or quick that moves along. Now, another method that you can use is some people like to have them twisted towards them. Like this. And then, take this, put it right in there. Now, y'all, it does allow you to get a little closer, but it's a whole lot slower than this method. And it's, it's just your preference, whatever you feel like doing. They also make another attachment besides this one that we got on this other clicker. And it's, it's just a plain bar. And it lasts, and it got the two forks sticking out on the end, like this one does. And it allows you to get a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see just how much closer it is than this one. So anyway, so this design you can also use for that. And I really hate this one. But everybody that works for me seems to like it. I, I just hate it. But you take it and it does the same thing. Just, just get after it, I guess. So that's two or three ways to use your clicker. So now it's just a matter of finishing all that up. Okay, now you're done with your clicker. And the last step before you box it, you notice I left all these setting with the writing up. The reason for that being you got it right on them right but anyhow so if it was just plain sausage you go through just clicking so it's got a marker for sausage and one for burger so you literally just go through there marking all that it's pretty self-explanatory mark all of them and in this case it's got pork fat added to it so we're going to go back a step and we're going to put pf and that stands for pork fat that way if you get one you don't know what's in it now you know what's in it. Now also up above it, it's advertised as a wild game, whatever. It just says it on all of them there. Now it's got off for elk, buffalo, moose, venison, whatever. Obviously this is a deer processor. We ain't got none of those other animals around here. So it's really a waste of time for us to mark that area. Mark it. I mean, it's obviously it's venison, it's a deer processor. So mark sausage, mark PF since it's got pork fat in it. And that's that. And the reason I write PF on it now was I got complained at for years by the person running this camera right now that we need to start putting P, what kind of fats in them. Yeah, I seen you zoom that thing in. 
So anyways. It just anyway. makes sense to do it because not everybody gets pork fat or beef fat and every time they get it. So it makes sense to mark any time there's something special in it. <laughs> because we even forget when we put our own stuff up. Hey, but it's our stuff, right? That don't help when you don't know what it is. You don't know that. Might. When you do something, we'll make good dog food. Well, it would, I mean, if you're going to spoil your dog, you know. Anyway, that's another story another time, I reckon. I said it.